to blame for all the world's problems. Hello, and thanks for your company. Today, the 93-year-old artist, who's one of the last survivors of the Nazi camps. Saved by a Soviet doctor in 1945, Shilomo Selinger lost his memory for several years. Through love, art and sculpture, he managed to get it back. As part of this special programme for Holocaust Memorial Day that honours the six million Jews murdered and the countless others killed under Nazi persecution, Nina Masson and Yenna Lee take us to meet a survivor in Paris. Looking for memories in stone, 93-year-old sculptor Shelomo Selinger is one of the last survivors of the Holocaust. He was just 14 years old when he was deported from his home. Over the span of four years, Selinger was interned at nine concentration camps. In his charcoal drawings, we see the horrors he witnessed. The artist's memories appear in flashes. C'est l'assassinat de mon père. Ils ont introduit un tuyau dans dans sa bouche et ouvert le robinet comme ça. Ils l'ont fait éclater par de l'intérieur. À partir de certains moments, je suis resté seul, seul dans l'enfer. When the war ended, Selinger was at Theresienstadt concentration camp in today's Czech Republic. Lying among dead bodies, he was miraculously found alive. The commander found that I was not completely dead and he was charged to give me the life. He spent one month in hospital afterward and suffered from amnesia for seven years. Thanks to the oblivion that I could reconstruct, Selinger's mother and younger sister were murdered at Auschwitz. Only his older sister survived. My force was the treasure that I had in me. The treasure was the love of my parents. That's what gave me the light when they were dark. The artist has channeled his trauma into paintings and monumental sculptures, like this one at the Drancy Memorial. Some 100,000 Jews were interned here before being deported to death camps. At the end of this train track, a carriage that symbolizes a trip with no return. Next to the structure, a message in stone for passerbys, reminding them to never forget. Next, her diaries made her one of the world's best-known Holocaust stories. Anne Frank died at a Nazi camp in 1945. Now her tale is being retold by Israeli director Ari Folman, best known for his movie Waltz with Bashir. Eight years in the making, where is Anne Frank brings to life her imaginary friend Kitty in an adventure that spans to the present day and draws parallels between those hiding from the Nazis during World War II and the current plight of refugees in Europe. Up until a year ago, everyone was in love with me. Everyone? It was all so wonderful. Then everything changed. I didn't want to do the film. They offered me, and uh, I, I said, no, not Holocaust. I had enough, and I don't want to do it. But they said, OK, you read the diary again, you go back home, and you see, you see what happens. I read it. I found it as a, as a father of three teenagers, incredible, unbelievable, that the girl at the age of 13 wrote it. This is sensational. And then my mother, who is a Holocaust survivor, told me, and she's very Polish Jew, she said, look, we never interfere in what you're doing, so do whatever you want, but if you don't take it, I will die this afternoon. It's your decision, you know, it's up to you. I said, okay, thank you. And she said, um, I will live, if you take it, I will live till the premiere. But she, she's still with us. When you write, 
who do you actually write to? To myself, of course. I prefer to think of my diary as a girl, a best friend. Her name will be Kitty. The power of this story that it has no violence in it and it has no cruelty in it and this is why it succeeded. You know, there were more than 2,000 diaries written in the Netherlands during World War II. I don't know if it's the best one. No one knows. This one worked because it talks about humanity. It talks about relationship. It talks about relationship between daughters and mothers that exist everywhere on the planet. You know, all the time I see it at home. It does not change. And she did it so well. This young lady here, named Kitty, is looking for Anne Frank. Have you seen her? Anne did not write this diary so that you could worship her. What is important... Get in the truck. Do everything you can to save one single soul from harm. Paris under occupation has been depicted many times in French film, but actress Sandrine Kibelin has found a fresh take in her debut as a writer-director. Set in the French capital in 1942, une jeune fille qui va bien, or a happy young girl, is first and foremost about the joys of life, as Selena Sykes reports. À quoi songez-vous donc en me considérant si fort? A film about youth, love, friendships and dreams under the backdrop of war. Il y a ce fameux concours. Mais il te faut du repos et canaliser un peu toute cette énergie. Je veux pas me reposer à mon âge. Une jeune fille qui va bien follows Irene, a carefree 19-year-old played by Rebecca Marder, who wants to become an actress. Though as a Jewish girl living in Paris in 1942, her coming-of-age story has an expiration date. Everything is said without being said. Nothing is explained in the film. Even when reading the script, it's not obvious. It's very subtle. It's a film about life. As for the war, there are a few clues that tell us we're in 1942, that Irene is a young Jewish girl because she has to declare herself, because she has to wear a yellow star. But I think that for the first half hour of the film, you can't tell what time period we're in. A subtle unveiling of the historical context through the eyes of a teenager, without World War II ever taking centre stage. Paris under occupation has been depicted many times in French film. Sandrine Kibala wanted to find a new angle for her debut as a writer-director, focusing instead on the psychological impact of small losses of civil liberties. I was interested in how things were before, and then how things gradually changed under the occupation. You hear one thing, but you carry on eating your breakfast. Then there's another change, and you start to feel like something's wrong, and then it's suddenly oppressive. She's this young girl who on the surface seems to be doing well, but that's not really the case. For Kibelin, une jeune fille qui va bien is first and foremost a film about the joys of life and a reminder of just how quickly that can be taken away. We're going to visit an exhibition now with a remarkable collection of photos of German concentration camps. The Musée de la Résistance in a Paris suburb is showcasing British photographer Michael Kenner's work, as Nicholas Rushworth reports. Michael Kenner's photographs recount the horror of the Holocaust they were taken over a period of 15 years at several Nazi concentration camps. Light emerges from shadow in black and white prints that convey a sense of bleakness and despair. For me, the crematorium ovens here, I've purposely selected a very, very limited depth of field. So that, oh, I mean, at least for me, it feels like you're just being sucked into these ovens. It's, and, and it just goes on forever. It's into this complete darkness, black, it's kind of the, it's some ways how I felt about being in, in the camp sometimes, that it was, uh, that you were just, you were just going to be sucked away, no longer existing. Kenner became interested in the subject when he was a student at the London College of Printing. 
He began the project several years later, in 1986, during a visit to the Natzweiler Struthof camp in eastern France. He donated 301 negatives and prints to France in the year 2000. His collection is a record of events, not a commercial venture. I, you know, I've often been asked, well, you know, Michael Kenny, you're not Jewish, you know. You don't have any brothers, sisters, relatives involved in this um, Holocaust. Uh, so why do you photograph? And for me, it says, well, I'm, yes, but I'm, you know, I'm human, yes. So I'm part of the memory. I am part of the whole picture. Um, and for me, in some ways, perhaps it was even easier because I wasn't so integrally connected that I could be a little bit more ob objective almost, not so subjective. 82 prints are on show till the 15th of April next year at the French Resistance Museum near Paris. The exhibition is called Light from Shadow, Photographs of the Nazi Camps. And to finish our commemoration of Holocaust Memorial Day, we're going to leave you with an exhibition that brings together more than 50 contemporary portraits captured of survivors and their families in the UK. The series at the Royal Photographic Society Gallery in Bristol reveals their lives today and highlights our collective responsibility to cherish their stories. Thanks for joining us. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Mm -hmm.